Welcome to Spinema TV, where we wax nostalgic about 80s and 90s film classics. I'm Bernie Bregman of Nerds Like Us, and next to me is... Nikki Steele. Who is the biggest fan of the film that we're going to talk about today, James Cameron's T2, Judgment Day. Now, Nikki, you are as big a fan of the Terminator... Yeah, biggest, biggest. The biggest fan of Terminator 2. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, about your love of Terminator. Rise of the Machines? <laughs> Nothing. Genesis? <laughs> the TV show? <laughs> was there even a T1 or is it just T2 and there's no, nothing T1 else? No, T1 counts. T1 counts. It counts? Yeah. It's still T1 in play. Counts. Yes, but T2 blew everything out of the water. There is nothing after that. Well, this is going to be interesting since you're such a Terminator fan, so let's go ahead and start with our funky fresh film facts about T2 Judgment Day. Okay, number one. Sequel to success. This movie did 434% more box office revenue than the first one. Name one, name one sequel that can even compare to 434%. Definitely it's one of the best sequels ever made. That yes. and Empire Strikes Back, maybe even X2. Fun fact number two, Stranger Than Science Fiction. The fictional release of Skynet, August 29th, 1997, is actually only two weeks from the actual release of Google on September 15th, 1997. Yeah, Terminator even predicted the future. It did. Yeah. Number three, you've got a real set of balls on you. So T2 actually pioneered motion capture. There is rarely a film today that doesn't use mocap in its processing at some point. I mean, just think about it. We wouldn't have Gollum without motion capture. Without T2. Fun fact number four. Casting Calamity. Oh my god, guys, just imagine this if you will. They were looking at Billy Idol as the T-1000 and O.J. Simpson as the T-800. Yes, yeah. I would have died. No, I would have died. Can you imagine Billy Idol running down the street after the cop car? It's a nice day for a big killing. Number five, we have audio overload. Linda Hamilton actually suffered severe hearing loss during filming. She had gone to the bathroom, came back out, forgot to put in her earplugs, and during one of the scenes, when Arnold shot his shotgun, we had our eardrums, and she's permanent. It's, it's, it's permanent deafness in one of the ears. So it'd be accurate to say that Arnold carries a big boomstick. I personally think it was when they were leaving the mental institution that when he launched his shotgun out the window, it was right in one of her ears. Let's go ahead and talk about real feels. I want to know what this movie was like uh, when it first came out for you. Uh, how old were you when you first experienced Terminator? Um, what did it do for you uh, as a fan? Um, how did it change your life? I mean, we know that, that you, are, uh, uh, you cosplay as the T-800. Yes. Um, and so Terminator's big for you. Tell me about that. You know, in 91, I was in first grade, something like that. Yeah, so first grade. So I didn't see it in theaters. I ended up seeing it, I think, two years after. But it completely changed my entire life. And I am obsessed with Terminator and T2. And yes, I... I had no idea. Really? You no. didn't know? But that's real early to be getting into a film yeah. with this kind of subject matter. You've yeah. got all this uh, political intrigue, the violence. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't peg a, a first grade girl as a Schwarzenegger movie fan. I love him. One of the things that I love about Judgment Day is the fact that they really touch upon a lot of this stuff with, with he's the perfect father for John Connor because he is fatherless. Because you know, Reese died in the first one, even though he was sent back to be his father, and in the future he was his father, so there's a lot of fun time travel stuff with that. T-800 ends up being the perfect father for him. He will never hurt him, ever. He will follow his every command, and he will be by his side no matter what. Now, that is something- Because every kid needs the father following their commands. That's gonna turn out well. I want a T-800. I want a personal T-800. Wouldn't that be awesome? Having a, I think every kid wanted a personal T-800. Yes, for um, and the But is that because that. it was a, a you know, strong robot killing machine doing your bidding, or is that because it was Arnold and all those great one-liners? I mean, which, well, which was the more appealing piece? Can you make me choose? Let's go into Spinema Reboot. If we were to <laughs> reboot the Terminator 2 Judgment Day film today, who would play the character. No one, no one, no one. Well, we're, we're gonna no. just, we're gonna, just uh -uh. imagine if you will. 
All right, it's, it's a parallel universe. We're in the multiverse right now, and it's not real Earth, but it's like Earth 2, which is kind of fake Earth, sort of, a little bit. Um, so in, in fake Earth, they're Launch making... a missile onto fake Earth and blow it up before that happens. Well, you can't do that yet. Yeah. Who would you cast as Sarah Connor, originally played by Linda Hamilton? Okay, so Sarah Connor, I could, I could possibly get away and allow for a recasting, and I would, I would do Charlize Theron. All right, all right. Yeah. Charlie's played a really cool kind of gritty character in Mad Max. Um, you you know, that. we can see, we can, I could see that. I give yeah. you that. I think that's great. All right, so we're going to cast Charlize Theron as uh, Sarah Connor now. Who's going to play her son, John Connor? I think I've got a good one in uh, Tom Holland, the new Spider-Man. Um, I think he showed a lot of great emotional range in um, uh, Captain America Civil War. I think uh, he actually looks a little bit like Edward Furlong, like some similar physical appearance. Um, and I just really think he could play that like dejected kind of rebellious uh, uh, character that, that Edward Furlong portrayed. No, you just don't touch it. You find nobody. All right, all right, so nobody's playing John Connor. Who's gonna play the T-1000? No one, because it's not being made. What about mocap superstar Andy Serkis? Um, and, and just think about Andy Serkis doing all those morph scenes and things that the T-1000 does. Um, or if you want to go with like that oh, yeah, stone-faced yeah, yeah. kind of bad guy, what about Lee Pace, who was Ronin in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and was also in uh, the Lord of the Rings films as Prince Panty Pants? No. Uh, what about the T-800, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Um, I was thinking. No! You gotta have someone big and beefy, right? No film is complete without a Hemsworth brother. I really feel strongly about that. Either Hemsworth, probably no, Chris, Hemsworth. has the no. body. No. That V, we no. saw it in Thor. No. Just, mm, no. He could be the Terminator. No. Yes. I'd see it. If you were to give it a modern update, let's, let's kind of think, wh where does Skynet come from? What is Skynet in today's world? What becomes Skynet? Internet, video cameras. I feel like it's got to be something a little more like like sinister, like eBay and Amazon, where all our money goes to, and and they learn they learn our buying patterns, so they know yeah. what we like, and somehow that makes us vulnerable, and then that becomes Skynet, right? Is it kind of like those ads that like follow you? You know, if you look at one thing that all yeah, but if you click it off, they get pissed off and they send the T1000 after you. I feel like an updated T1000, it wouldn't need to like touch you to become you. Um, it, it would it would it would already have like access like you said to the internet so it could just download like TMZ and become anybody right I want to terminate that one just you are terminated I get the feeling you want to terminate anything that isn't Terminator 2 yes. and maybe okay yes. it's been really fun um, discussing this with such an open-minded uh, co-host on that note this has been Spinema TV I'm Bernie Bregman of Nerds Like Us and I'm Nikki Steele and that was our not so much spin on it. Yeah,